the summer of 1940, things weren't going terribly well for the United Kingdom. Our expeditionary force sent over to uh, protect the borders of inland continental Europe had been pushed back to the beaches of Dunkirk and subsequently evacuated. The Luftwaffe was gathering strength overhead and the Battle of Britain was underway. The next stage we thought in Hitler's Operation Sea Lion would be a full-scale invasion of the British Isles. We had lost most of our heavy weapons and vehicles at Dunkirk. But we had a plan. If we didn't have tanks and heavy weapons, we'd have to make do with what we had. So we would encase them in steel and concrete and site them at vulnerable points around the UK. And it was this time in 1940 when the Second World War British pillbox was born. Designed to protect our weapons after losing most of the vehicles and uh, a lot of heavy weapons at Dunkirk. Uh, pillboxes would have formed static lines of defence. First of all around the coast, um, as part of what was, what was nicknamed the Coastal Crust, and then laterally um, in a series of static stop lines across the country. To get a better understanding of pillboxes and how they were utilised, uh, it'd be useful if we took a, a closer look at one. So this is an irregular hexagon. It has five sides, five forward-facing sides, each with a concrete loophole in them. Quite often these loopholes were precast. There were precast sections, and then the the main fill of the pillbox um, was poured around it. But not in this case. They appear to have been cast um, in situ. Uh, they don't have stepped sides, as we would often expect to see on the outside. Um, that was partly an anti-ricochet measure. Uh, the stepping was an anti-ricochet measure. Um, but it has been fitted with steel shutters. These were possibly retrofitted um, after some guidance came out about protection against flamethrowers. The pillbox itself then, um, the shuttering doesn't remain. So the shuttering, which was likely wood um, or steel panels, has been removed once the concrete has set. Uh, the rear of the pillbox, um, these are often known as uh, pistol loops, um, but there's no evidence to suggest um, that they were specifically designed for pist pistols. Um, however, they would have been for, for some sort of rear protection um, of the occupants of the pillbox. Uh, if we come inside then, the first thing we are struck with is this Y-shaped wall in front of us, and this was an anti-ricochet wall. Uh, directives came out in 1941-1942 um, telling engineers to essentially fill up um, all but two of the loopholes within a pillbox. And the reason for this is quite clear. Depending on the direction of attack uh, of the pillbox, Rounds may come, come through this, so the enemy may be able to fire through that loophole. If the rounds did come into the pillbox and this anti-ricochet wall wasn't here, those rounds would then go essentially pass straight through um, and do a lot of damage and kill, kill other occupants. Uh, and even with the anti-ricochet wall here, um, there are still lots of, uh, lots of opportunities for shrapnel, um, if the pillbox is coming under sustained artillery fire or water fire for shrapnel to get inside the pillbox, although unlikely because of the, the small loop holes. Um, this one in particular has some fantastic art around it. So if we have, if we have a look at the walls, um, the walls are over a metre thick, not quite two. Um, but this would have been this would have been designated as a bulletproof pillbox um, at, at certain periods during the development of the pillbox. A uh, different terminology was used. Um, bulletproof and shellproof uh, were two of those two of those terms. 
shell-proof pillboxes really needing walls uh, six feet thick in order to protect against the bombardment that could be expected. But if we have a look, there is an almost complete shutter mechanism still with, with hinge. So this, this wouldn't have been used uh, to mount a weapon. This, this, may, this may even just have been atmosphere, um, environmental because it is right by the coast to stop inclement weather coming through. Um, or indeed, as I mentioned, it, it may have been a measure to protect against uh, flamethrowers. However, if all, if all the shutters in the pillbox were down, um, they essentially just become a, they just become a cooking pot. Uh, so the, the danger really was, was acknowledged. This pillbox in particular, um, if we have a look on the outside, it has, uh, it has a, little, a little cup holder or a little top hat on top. This is sometimes called a periscope slot. Um, however, I, I really doubt that um, it was used for a periscope. So I've, I've put the 360 degree camera up, so I'll give you a view of what, what you can see there. So what I think this actually was, and if we look, if we look at that how it was constructed, so, so that hole literally has been, um, has been drilled and, and chiseled through the existing concrete roof. So I think this was ventilation. Uh, there was some concern that there would be a build-up of toxic gases uh, inside a pillbox during firing. Um, and perhaps because it was fitted with the steel shutters, um, these extra vents um, were installed. And with so many machine guns firing, you know, that, that certainly, there certainly is a risk of that. Uh, toxic buildup of fumes, but also what you have is a problem with overheating barrels. So firing a firing a, uh, an automatic weapon for a prolonged period of time, um, there is the risk of overheating the barrels. Uh, and in some early plans of pillboxes, there were barrel baths uh, assigned uh, for in, in the pillboxes. So it may be that, that this area um, down here. Uh, was, was indeed for a barrel bath. So during sustained fire, the, bar the barrels could be changed, um, could be changed to the guns, um, and any steam created as the as the barrels were diced would go out the um, out the vents into the roof, and the vents themselves are are protected. Um, so yeah, we have a pretty pretty typical hexagonal pillbox. We have, if we have a look on the outside as well, you'll see around the door there are a number of, um, of holes. Not, not quite sure what these would have been used for. Um, there may have been some sort of porch around here um, to, protect, to protect against the weather. Um, so shutters, shutters could be pulled down. These plastic plugs, obviously very modern very modern plugs, uh, but there would likely have been likely have been wood in these holes that then into those would have been screwed, um, would have been screwed something. So if I extend you on the pole, we should be able to have a look up onto the roof. So on the roof, uh, we can see that. Um, that little top hat that contained what I think was a vent uh, for each side of the of the pillbox. On the vent itself, um, there's a there's a small single course of bricks along the bottom on two sides only, um, which to me indicates more that it was it was less for observation and a, being a a periscope as such, and it it was um, that was to try and stop uh, some of the the wind and rain from blowing in. Uh, yeah, into the pillbox. And you can see from here the, the environment has changed greatly since the pillbox were constructed with the large open beach to our front um, and on 
1941 aerial images from the RAF, we can see the, that there are, there's a whole series of anti-landing poles across the beach um, to, to prevent flat bottom landing craft. It's a very shallow, very shallow beach, there's a very uh, wide tidal range and it comes in, comes in and goes out very quickly. Um, so yeah, I hope you en enjoyed that little walk around of a, of a pillbox. All this is hopefully contributing. Uh, I'd like to make a, a longer form documentary on, on the development of pillboxes uh, during the Second World War. So don't forget if you if you liked this video, don't forget to, uh, to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if there's anything specifically you'd like me you'd like me to try and do some research on, or, um, or if you can add some add some knowledge uh, to the subject, that would be appreciated. So in the meantime, enjoy some artwork. <laughs>